Because if we think about how sports started, it started as a way for men to demonstrate how powerful and aggressive they are. And this is the original Olympics, right? There were no women allowed. And as we feed forward into sport and how it became okay for women to be involved, at the high performance level, if a woman walks in and shows any fallibility, then she's immediately put on a lower stool, right? You know, you can't, you can't play with the boys because you have a menstrual cycle, you're bleeding, you're a woman, you're a delicate flower. But then the reality is women weren't eating enough to accommodate for that stress, which then feeds forward to low energy availability, maybe relative energy deficiency in sport, perturbations in all of our menstrual cycle hormones. So it's not the act of the high intensity resistance training. It's the act of not fueling appropriately for it and then getting the okay to not have your period because yeah, now you're, you're in with your training hard enough. You've lost it. You're more like a man. Wow. Um, very interesting history there. Is it true then that if a woman maintains either, um, caloric balance with her basically eating enough to support her energy output or even a slight caloric surplus that it's unlikely that um, her periods will cease even if she's training very hard and very often. Correct. So it basically boils down to calories in, calories out. Fuel for the task at hand mm -hmm. because some people want to have a slight calorie deficit even in high training.